Okay, finally. Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm actually talking. Um, so, uh, if my memory serves me right, we left off somewhere around here um, in class. I suspect we mirrored it, um, but I don't believe we ever dealt with this um, kind of odd um, result from uh, generating that uh, boundary surface. So when it offsets or when we gave it thickness, there's this um, sort of drop down, uh, which technically isn't, um, you know, uh, necessarily a bad thing. It's pretty normal, but I really wanted it to kind of be a little bit more controlled. Um, so uh, in the video that was on in the class folder, it shows me doing that, but I don't think I ever explain it in class and that's that's where I'm going to start. So um, the way uh, I'm going to accomplish uh, cutting this um, this extra bit off is with a cut sweep and um, to do that I need to create a profile that acts as a cutter and to do that I need the profile to line up at, at the correct place and that correct place happens to be right here at the end of end of this transition. Um, so if, uh, if I wanted to do that, I need to first have a plane that is on right on that edge. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the top plane and start a sketch. And I'm going to uh, convert that line using convert entities. So say OK. And it translates it down there. So when I go to the top view, and if I was to go into wireframe, you'd see it lines up right where it should. So uh, the reason for this is I need to create a plane um, that this uh, that will intersect the body at that particular point. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to Features, Reference Geometry, and Plane. And I'm going to pick that line. And then I'm going to pick the plane that I drew it on, or in this case converted from, uh, or to, and that's the top plane. So when I do that and I rotate, you can see there's the plane. So I'm going to say OK to that. And uh, it's not terribly big, kind of funny, just matches the, the sketch. The um, physical size of the plane doesn't matter, but sometimes, just for my own head, I like to kind of increase the size so that I can kind of see where it's intersecting. It just sort of helps, helps me think better. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to start a sketch. And then I'm going to essentially trace uh, in fact, I'm not going to trace. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw kind of a uh, you know, random shape almost. It doesn't, doesn't even really matter. What matters is that this and this are collinear. And what also matters is that it's wide enough. Um, it's sticking out far enough on either side that when I use it to sweep, it will roll around and and, um, and still uh, extend outward um, from this point and this point. Um, so I'm going to say OK to that. So that's my profile. And then what I'm going to do is go to uh, Features and I'm going to look for Swept Cut. And then because I just drew this, it said, oh yeah, that's what you want. And so then in the next box, which is asking for the path, I'm going to check that inside edge, and you can kind of see in the preview what it's going to do. It's just going to cut that right off. So I say OK, and there we are. So now if I go back to the front, I don't have any of that weird drop down um, anymore. So I'm going to hide that plane, and then I'm going to go to Mirror, and I'm going to pick that face, and under Bodies to Mirror, pick this. I'm going to merge, and we are good. All right. So um, the 
bottom of this surface, I'm not really crazy about. Um, I, I think I would actually go back and adjust that, but I think I can I can live with it for now. Um, we're going to move on to more pressing things. But um, uh, I want to check one thing, which is uh, tangent edges as phantom. And uh, that just helps me notice that when I have a dotted line, it, it tells me I'm being tangent. Um, so now what I want to do is establish the seat. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to um, open up uh, or show my um, sketch picture. And uh, unfortunately, from the side of, uh, of the drawing, it doesn't uh, look all that logical. It just it looks a little weird because of the nature of the seat. So we're going to mainly use this as a, uh, a guide. And the first thing I want to do is actually create the seat. Um, and so if I was to look at uh, he said, she said, and not the video, um, I would see, you know, that the front of the seat, it's pretty simple, it's just a slight curve and um, maybe from good way to plan ahead, huh? Uh, maybe from the top, it's just going to have like some simple um, radius uh, work. So it's just a little bit in the front and a little bit in the back, and just trust me on that. Um, we're just going to go with it. So um, what I want to do is first on the right plane, make sure it's yeah, it's my center. So on the right plane, what I want to do is start a sketch, and I'm going to draw out a line that probably starts here and. I don't know, goes to there. And uh, I'm going to uh, exit that. And I'm going to do the same thing, reference geometry plane. I'm going to pick that point, pick this point, And you can see that plane lines up. And it's going to go like so. And so if I uh, hide those sketches again, kind of difficult to see with, with them on. I'm going to start a sketch and I'm going to go to the front plane and I'm going to take the spline tool and I'm going to uh, drag up this spline and this diamond will be set to horizontal and this I'm just going to drag it out to close to the leg but not quite all the way and um, I also want to make sure that this point and this point are coincident. Okay. So then the next thing I want to do is take the center line and go from there to there. And now I have a dash line and this. So I'm going to window select both and hit mirror entities. And uh, if I go to the top view, we can see how that's going and that'll work. So all I'm going to do is now go to surfaces and extrude that surface oversize just some amount like this. And I'm going to say okay. So now I just have this sheet. Uh, I can hide that plane now. Now I have this uh, sheet that's going to represent the top of my surface. And uh, from here, we just need to trim it so that it seems to be the right size. So I'll go back to the top plane, start a sketch. And from here, I'm going to take, um, what do I want to do? I'm going to take the straight line tool. And I'm going to start 
just here and go over and go over and go over. And normally I don't use sketch fillets, um, but in this case, I think I will. Um, so I'm going to put the front uh, fillet at an inch. And then I'm going to pick uh, the back fillet. And this one's going to be a lot bigger. So I'm going to increase this one. Maybe not quite as big. Eight. Let's do 8.5. And let's give this a shot. So let's see. We have something like this. And I add a center line like that. Window select, mirror, surfaces, trim surface. There's my seat. And I'm going to change that to keep selections because I just quickly picked that. And then now I have the seat um, for my chair. And you want to just make sure that you trim it enough that the leg is not, you know, uh, touching or intersecting. Um, I'm not giving out any specific dimensions, so this will be for you to kind of eyeball. Now, um, from here, <clears throat> um, we need to look at a couple of things. One is that the uh, legs are being supported by these rails underneath. And then there are these little tiny kind of, um, I don't know, knuckles or um, sort of uh, extensions that um, join the, the uh, seat support to the actual leg. It's kind of important to know exactly where these land. Um, and I want to establish something to, to know where to aim for before we actually run these, uh, these rails. Um, they're a little trickier than, than it first looks. So the way I'm going to do that is go back to the side view. And I think I'm going to go on the right plane, start a sketch, and I'm going to just draw a line that is maybe kind of sort of in the middle of the chair. So like from this edge to the bottom edge, I'm just putting this in here. It doesn't have to be anything other than eyeballed. And then I'm going to take another one, or rather I'm going to use offset and I'm going to offset it maybe uh, two. That's kind of how I see that image. So I'm going to have these two sketches right here. And what I'm going to do that with this is I'm going to exit, hit the S key, and I'm going to use this feature called split line. Now, if you don't have that um, in your shortcut, very well might not, you'll go to um, uh, insert, curve, and split line. So once you've done this, you're going to choose projection and in the selections, you're going to pick those sketches. And then in this blue box, you're going to pick these blue faces. And when you say, okay, you will notice that now your legs have these little rectangles that were um, sort of created by that split line. So you still have a solid body. There's, you know, nothing's changed in terms of the chair form, but the face of that leg has been split a little bit. Um, I don't know what, not really a little bit, but it's just been split. Um, and this is where the leg rail will join or the seat support will join to the leg. So the next thing that we have to do is create those uh, rails. So if I go to the bottom, uh, what I'm going to do is start a sketch on, let's say, the top plane. doesn't really matter, top or as long as it's from this view, we're good. 
And what I want to do is take a center line and I want to draw from this point right here. Not, you know, you can kind of see that little split line happening. I want to go from that point over to its opposite corner. So right there. Okay. And then what I want to do is take the uh, three point rectangle. So it's the third one. I don't use it very often, but it makes sense to use it here. Um, and what I'm going to do is click on this, click on this, and click on this. And I'm going to say dimension wise, logic would suggest that's an inch. And uh, in terms of the overall length, we're going to make that up. I'm going to say that's uh, 17. And um, in terms of you know distance from one edge to the other, that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is uh, say OK. Or actually, I don't even need to do that. I've got the sketch laying on the ground. And what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I take that back. I will exit. Um, what I'm going to do is first go to surfaces and thicken, and I'm going to thicken this chair seat to be about, eh, it's probably more like uh, 0.375. Uh, uncheck merge. Won't well, merge anyway because it's not touching. And now what I need to do is get this sketch to become the bottom rail under the seat. So the way I'm going to do that is uh, pretty basic. I'm going to go to extrude boss. I'm going to pick that sketch and I'm going to change under direction one. I'm going to change this to up to surface. Scroll around and uh, let's see. Will it? Sometimes when it doesn't preview, it tells me my plan's not going to work out. Okay. Base cannot terminate extruded surface. So what we'll do is offset surface zero amount. I'm gonna hide the seat for a second. Let's try this again. Um, and sorry, not extrude surface. Although we might come back to that. Go here and then up to surface. There we go. Why it cares about a surface versus a solid, I don't, I don't know. But um, we're going to go with up to surface, uncheck merge, and say OK. So we had to kind of create this surface anyway because the next move is to uh, cut this block with this surface. So from here, I'm going to go to surfaces, offset. I'm going to pick these faces again, and I'm going to offset them 1.5, maybe 1.25. And then I'm going to go to direct editing, and I'm going to choose split, and I'm going to pick, so offset the last certain, in fact, let me do that again to be clear. I'm going to hide that one. I'm going to choose split. And for the trim tool, I'm going to pick that surface, hit cut bodies, grab that, make sure it says consume, and then I consumed. All right, so now I have this uh, piece right there. I'm going to hide that surface. And now what I need to do is join this to this, right? Um, now we're kind of doing this a little bit quick, um, technically. Um, I would spend a little bit more time here, but basically the logic is uh, without having the actual build file, I would, I would say if I was going to make this for real, I would be less arbitrary about my leg position. I'd probably make something that um, really defines very specifically the angle of these legs so that, um, so that this inner piece under the seat can be as simple as possible. Um, when it gets complicated uh, and never seen, it sort of 
you know, an indication that you want to revisit the design a little bit. Uh, there's no, there's no advantage to having some overly complicated thing that's never visible or you don't appreciate on a, on a visual level. Um, but um, anyway, uh, what we're going to do is get this face to join to this face, and that's pretty easy. So I'm just going to go to Surface. Uh, actually, I'll go to Features, and I'm going to do a Lofted Boss. I don't want to go to Surfaces and do Lofted Surface because it's just going to create more work for me. I want everything to be solid right now. So I'll go to Features, Lofted Boss. I'm going to pick the, not that edge, but I'm going to pick this face and I'm going to pick this face. And you can see it gives me this super cool twisted result. So all I have to do is grab that green um, little connector and it straightens up and gives me more or less what I want. So um, I'm not going to merge. Um, and I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to do the thing, same thing on the back side. So I'll go Lofted Boss. I pick this face. And I pick this one. Same thing, cool twist. Now it's untwisted by moving the connectors. And uncheck the merge options. And then I'm going to immediately go to Direct Editing, Combine. And I just want to combine these three as one. Okay. So now I have uh, these in place, and I think that theirs is slightly, or it's a little fancier. It kind of comes down and then jogs straight across. Um, we could do that, but um, we're not going to. Um, I'd rather move on to bigger and better. So from here, um, you can see that this is what I'm kind of talking about, is that if I was doing this uh, for real, I would ideally like to make this piece just totally straight, um, which means I'd have to reposition the leg a little bit or change the angle a little bit. Do something that, that would um, keep this piece really simple. Because when I look at this, I can tell you that if I had to make this exactly like this, where this kicks up, it's going to cost me a lot more money. Um, as opposed to it just being totally flat because when it's when it's um, in this position there's a whole bunch of material that has to be removed just so that that can kick and then that has it's it's just a headache um, so something to keep in mind but because I don't have the actual dimensions of this chair and we're working off of a photo um, we're just gonna we're gonna go with this um, so now what I need to do is just make another one of these. That's really easy, right? So I just pick the right plane and I hit mirror and I pick this and I make sure it's not merged and I say okay. Now what I can do is go to my solid bodies and bring back the chair or the seat. And other than some fillets, I'm basically done. Um, now, there's one thing that I've realized. I just learned this myself. I'm going to try this. I don't know if it'll actually work. Um, is that there's a feature under direct editing. By the way, I'm going to save this. Um, two things. One, I've noticed that in SolidWorks 2019, for some reason, move face, this particular tool seems to cause more crashes than any other tool. Um, so I've had specific crashes happen just from using move face. Um, so I don't know if that's unique to me, but if you're if you're running into that, um, you know, let me uh, let me know. Actually, I'd like to sort of keep on top of that. But anyway, um, if I use move face, um, I can choose translate. And I can pick this face and I can switch to up to surface. And uh, I believe I might get myself in trouble here. Um, I believe that maybe it's not going to work. Um, yeah, there we go. I'm sorry, I was on translate. I meant to be on offset. You'll notice. And I don't know how it determines this, but it's somehow following 
this curve. This is kind of a new thing. Um, in this case, it's probably not going to work out because if I lower that, I still get this kind of flat spot. Like it would really have to climb. There we go. I could say 0.55. And now it's just going to go all the way, which is kind of cool. Now, I don't know. Let's try it. We're learning together here. I'm going to pick this face and check that out. That's really kind of convenient. Um, so uh, I've never seen any documentation on that. Um, but that's pretty cool. Now what's left is this intersection where we would have to notch out um, or we would have to create some other kind of like bridge piece or we'd have to do something in here to kind of allow these to uh, intersect. But um, that's a detail that um, I'm not going to worry about right now. Um, and so that finishes up. He said, she said. Um, so basically, um, it's a relatively simple set of steps, but uh, hopefully this video will make it a little clearer. And if you want um, to, uh, to know any more, um, just let me know. Um, I'm planning to make another video um, very soon, next couple of days, um, that's going to push us into the next uh, project. Um, but that's all for now.